Hi. This this is gonna be this is gonna be a very lazy one. That's that's why it's long rather than uh, dense. Cause I couldn't be bothered whittling it. Even having uh, uh, the proverbial balls to show my face is something I just can't be bothered with for this one. If you can imagine an excuse for that decision, other than cowardice. <laughs> B- bear with me while I set the scene. This is Karen Strong. She she says right quite often. Very often. Way more than most people say it. Over at Honey Badger Radio, we sometimes take the piss out of her for it. Imitate it. Play drinking games around how often she says it. That sort of thing. And when we take the piss out of Karen, she goes, Yep, I do that. <laughs> I, I say that all the time. Right? Right? And she carries on doing her thing. One of her principles is, Own your shit. And so she does. This is Mundane Matt. He used to say, turn off that pesky ad block, sometimes. So people took the piss. They they made it his catchphrase, whether he liked it or not, as you do. And Matt went, yep, yeah, you got me. I, I do say that. It's, it's my thing. Everyone gets their knocks from time to time. Have at it. It's all good fun. And so on and so on. He didn't let it get to him. He just owned it and moved on. This is Cenk Uyghur. He also has a vocal meme that people mocked him for. Of course! He heard that mockery and he eventually went, Yeah, fair enough. I can see why that's catchy. Of course! And now he says it all the time in that mocking intonation. Of course! He's joining in with the mockery. He's able to laugh at himself. Even Cenk here, who's well known for being a bit of an arrogant blowhard from time to time. Even Cenk is capable of, you know, lifting that visor and not taking himself too seriously. And and you can go to any random flag-waving Kekistani and say, I think your meme is old and stale and lame and cringy, and they'll most likely go, okay, that's nice. <laughs> Excuse me, I have a party to go to <laughs> in that real-life thing where you get drunk and have fun and shake each other's hands like equals I'm running a bit late, see you but do hold that thought, I will call you later, I want to hear more about these feelings of yours it, it's a sign of maturity to be able to take immaturity and roll with it or indeed to be able to take mature criticism and roll with it, it's not just a sign of maturity, it's a sign of mental health at any age No, this yeah. is unlawful. no this it's is- not this is not an unreasonable. Call 911 right now. I'm, That's getting, fine. I'm getting molested. No. You touched me. Yeah. You I didn't touch me. you at all. You I got it on video. I felt you. They all saw you touch me. Okay, I've got you it on You molested video. me, fool. I've got it on a video and You molested me. This is Jim. His catchphrase is autism or autistic. By any definition of a catchphrase worth mocking, such as the other examples I gave, his catchphrase is to call everyone and everything autistic when it displeases him. Now, that is, that is indeed funny. Repetition can be and is funny. Anything is funny when it's inappropriate. In the same way, it's funny when a Muslim calls everything Jewish <laughs> or a progressive calls everything fascist or a racist calls everything a nigger, which is to say it's funny in a way that's also funny to make fun of. And here's what happens. <laughs> When you make fun of this catchphrase. Welcome to Peter Geddon. Long story short, they spend the next six months, at least, uh, basically demanding retribution. <laughs> retribution for, for, you know, making fun of a meme. A meme much older and arguably staler than Kekistan, much less catchy than Of Course, and with, if you ask me, far more skewed priorities than Turn Off That Pesky Ad Block. Those catchphrases, by the way, are all perfectly okay to mock. Encouraged, even. As a matter of fact, you're a butthurt bitch if you have a problem with anyone mocking those catchphrases, but you may not mock the meme that goes... 
everything I don't like is autistic. That one's different. See, that meme has <laughs> diplomatic immunity. See, because we find it so useful as a thought terminating click. I mean, I mean, it's funny. It's a funny meme, is what it is. And you're supposed, and by that I mean you're supposed to laugh with it, not at it. Laughing at it, it gets people very, very upset. So upset that they become compelled to tell salty lies about you forever. Like, <laughs> out of one side of their face, they will they will tell me to stop, beg me to stop, demand I stop. And out of the other side of their face, they will claim I am telling them to stop. <laughs> and that only an authoritarian bully would ever tell someone to stop like they are out of the other side of their face. So out of one side, they abandon their own standards. And out of the other side, they establish those standards and also tell a lie. And it is a lie. There's been a little bit of drama uh, about this thread. And those spinning the drama quite often seem strangely reluctant to actually produce the evidence, let alone examine it. So here it is. In the low bar, I have supplied a link to the thread so you can see it for yourself. That was good of me, wasn't it? Well, I say I say good. It should be standard practice, I think. I think, uh, I think a cornerstone of objective reporting is to supply like some evidence. The lies told about something do do not count as evidence, depending on your standards, especially when you can see the thing right there. <laughs> or maybe I just need to get out of that Gamergate mindset. As you can see, at no point in this thread, or anywhere, do I tell anyone to stop saying or not to say anything. And there's nothing in there about paedophiles either, by the way. Not in, not in my commentary anyway. Not a word or a letter or even a punctuation mark that even approaches the subject, let alone supports or defends such indefensible sickness. I hope none of you are surprised to see that, perhaps having been told some kind of lie that you listened and believed without evidence. That'll be important later. As you can see, the only subject I'm addressing there is the autism meme and its use and its overuse. Which is no different from voicing your opinion that Kekistan is a cringy meme. That Kekistan is a cringy and overused meme. That's a fair opinion. You're quite welcome to it. I personally find the everything I don't like is autistic meme to to be a little bit cringy. And it's not because I'm autistic. I'm not. It's the nature of the fucking sentence. Swap it for almost any word and I'll still find it cringy. But personally, that's not enough for me. I don't find this is cringe to to be a substantive argument. And, and this is funny, but that is cringe is generally not a sentiment I consider worth articulating on its own, because it's literally nothing but feelings. Funny and cringe. It's literally just describing what your face might do as a result of the emotions you're experiencing. And no one should be under any obligation to give a shit about that shit. So I go that little bit further and explain why I think it's cringe. And it's because... It's not just overused, it's misused, this meme. It has idiomatic ambiguities that make it interchangeable as either a meaningless insult or a sincere diagnosis, albeit a usually erroneous one. In a world where borderline personality disorder is not even a household name, let alone a, an effective thought-terminating cliché, that's sort of what I'm going on about in this longish post. That's the thing about explaining something non-emotional, something that actually relates to what was actually said, or perhaps even relates to material reality. It only takes one word to express your emotional state, like cringe. It takes perhaps six paragraphs to actually explain 
a thing, a, a, a rational, logical thing. I, there's no word for it that's not cringe at this point. But if you write six paragraphs about something, I mean, that's 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 like 14 paragraphs. That's some kind of tirade. I'm not reading that. This is this is one of my favorites. Someone, someone describes the drinking game I came up with as, quote, literally, parentheses, the proper usage of the word, end parentheses, language policing, when you say this, end quote. <laughs> you begin to see why certain people flounced from Gamergate. To, to some people, it really was only ever a sex scandal. It was never about games, let alone the ethics surrounding them. Games are not fun. Not when I don't like them. Games really are whatever threatening thing I say they are to suit me. They're, they're just not the, they're not the threatening thing that some other people say they are to suit them. <laughs> but I still wouldn't call this language policing. I'd call it a very butterfingered attempt at absorbing the agency of a pedestalized celebrity. It was just a meme. It happens all the time. Here's another good one. Mercury Sun. Complaining about feminists in <laughs> the current year. Wake up and smell the zog, you puffter. There you go. <laughs> Leave them alone, will you? They're irrelevant now. It's not getting worse on that front. It's getting better. <laughs> I mean, how? There's, there's nothing. Even how would you even find news related to that every week? Do something else with your life, eh? The, the blue pill's just easier, isn't it? It's just easier. But fair enough. You expressed your opinion about a meme. You expressed your opinion about the expression of an opinion about that meme. And even if. All you're doing is expressing an opinion. That is all you're doing. Expressing. Giving an opinion about a meme. Or even a fact about a meme. That doesn't mean you're telling people to stop saying that meme. Does it? Saying Kekistan is cringe is not tantamount to demanding the Kekistan meme be outlawed. Is it? <laughs> and to say... The calling everything autistic meme is a cringy meme, and also frequently a sincere misdiagnosis, in case anyone's interested, is also not tantamount to demanding the autism meme be outlawed. It's just, in both of these cases, making fun of what someone says. Making fun of what you are saying is in no way a violation of your free speech. Unless you're that good at twisting shit. That good at navigating upside down land. Perhaps you're one of those folks who has that like, X Men mutant power. The one where you can telepathically like arbitrate that a thing is objectively not fun for anyone. And you can read other people's emotions as well as your own. And it just so happens that your emotions are all positive and your appointed antagonist's emotions are all negative. Therefore, they are not having fun. They are triggered and butthurt. <laughs> I mean, what he's actually doing is, you know, smiling and dancing and making music and playing with his toys. But that, that's, that's, that's just a sign of how riled up he is. <laughs> we are winning. Do you, do you have that power? That, do you have, like, when someone's laughing at you, like visibly, audibly, laughing their ass off at you, at your expense... And and if you can't handle the reality of that, you can simply conjure the fantasy realm of dazzling lights and infinite skies. A place where your obvious hysterical outrage and repeated demands to fight some kind of duel, that's, that's just you having a great time. <laughs> and, and there, their, their drunken, brightly coloured laughter... It's actually them, them crying and throwing a tantrum. <laughs> and also being the language police. <laughs> That's a meme that comes up quite often. Uh, and I, I bet you it's another one of those memes that it's not okay to make fun of. Am I right? Uh-oh, I'm going to do it anyway. 
I've been now uh, asked by a couple of people if I'd take a look at this bully hunter thing that's just come up. And yes, uh, that sounds pretty daft. If you if you're branding anyone who offends you as a bully, then yeah, that's that is cringe, classic cringe. Reason being, if you're interested, the the reason being the self awareness you must lack to try and solve a problem by creating it. Maybe I'll get around to talking about that sort of thing, but priorities. First, I I really should probably tell you about the folks who brand anyone of, who offends them as the language police. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's worse. That is worse. On the cringe factor, at least. That's a lot worse than calling people bullies. Calling people the language police. For, for essentially the same offence. <laughs> and that's several steps further into dystopian fantasy land. Many layers deeper into self-righteous paranoid delusion making fun of me is policing me now watch while i make fun of you again i wish i wish i could say this kind of mindset is rare or, or unfamiliar these days this this anyone who doesn't do what i want is a knock attitude but oh yeah yeah look around you this is the generation of that shit of of the anyone who doesn't tell me what I want to hear is a pussy somehow. Fucking <laughs> attitude. This this one's my favourite. This guy. <laughs> Crockmaster McGee's axe. Please forge ahead with this, Jim. It isn't that I have a problem with Mike, although your interactions with us with others are always entertaining. It's that he is a card carrying member of the <laughs> And <laughs> what follows here, as you may notice, are five words I have never called myself, let alone one on my sleeve, let alone laminated onto a business card with raised lettering. And that subtle off-white colouring, the tasteful thickness of it. Yeah, upside your head, fella. This is full of stars. But as we know, it doesn't matter what you call yourself or what you do or say or believe what matters is if someone calls you a thing or a series of things then you are that thing and that series of things and a card carrying member of that series of things no less so <laughs> what this is what this is these five words here is is basically a series of spells a list of like, voodoo incantations that are Chanted at the outsider to spiritually purify him for sacrifice to the salt god. This this guy's like a witch doctor. He leaps out of the bushes going, Mandingo him demon in your demo. And then he and then he recites the five magic words. Which could be anything. In some tribes it's racist, sexist, alt right bigot. <laughs> or white supremacist, fascist, misogynist, neo reactionary. If they're university educated. Or indeed, white genocide degenerate Zionist cuck. <laughs> if you're cursed with a high IQ. But they all mean the same thing. Basically, they all mean... Like, ooga booga, durka durka, okay, we can attack him now. <laughs> I don't have any problems with this person, but... Simsalabim, destroy him for my amusement, please. I hope you're not easily manipulated or anything. <laughs> it's not even identity politics. It's identity shamanism. It's the primordial like, web-toed ancestor of identity politics. This is shit the monkeys did. <laughs> it's, oh, you've invented language. That means I get to be a dick, right? Woo! No, no, thog. That's not what it means. Why do you say that about everything? But wait! Wait, I hear you ask. Surely the skeptic community is dead. We killed it. We 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 felled it. We we in the in the in the totally not a skeptic, totally not a community community. We valiantly did slay 
that that seven nippled hydra called the skeptic community and now there's nothing left except exactly the same people <laughs> apart from that one guy who deleted his channel and that means we win no not that guy the other guy and that me and that means we win that dude deleted his channel and that means everyone i don't like has been defeated by me and what i stand for which is nothing <laughs> Okay, good, good, good point. Good, what? Illustrative point. Now, what are we all called now at this point in history? As I said, the, the names change with the seasons. And it's been six months, at least, since enlightened rationalist classical liberal skeptosphere were the go-to words for the magic name-call ritual. What are they now? I believe it's something like autism, reddit, liberalist, pedo, cringe. <laughs> We're not really bothering with the traditional like, four adjectives, then a noun format. It was it was too much effort. But still, there's still you know, a nice variety in there. <laughs> something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. Do you, do you see what I mean about how virtue signaling and woke hipstering relate to each other on the same axis as does any other axis? Albeit reflectively. It's either, it's either I care and you don't, these five words prove it, Shazam, I'm better than you. <laughs> or it's you care and I don't, these five words prove it, Abracadabra, I'm better than you. <laughs> You're both wrong. You're both wrong to say I care more than you or I care less than you. You don't know. And in any case, you evidently both care deeply you care religiously even about this season's hottest name calls. And that is just about all you care about. That and obviously you care what some people think some of the time, just like everyone else. <laughs> it's just another one of those realities that's difficult to come to terms with for some reason. So yeah, the rest of this thread is just everyone else. After that one moderately long comment of mine, I just show up a couple of times to go, look at how autistic everyone is. Sorting out autistics is what you do in it, Jim. Lol. That's sort of, you know, having fun with the absurdity of the meme's ambiguity. And and Jim, Jim concluded with, how about you sort them out? Which is a good point. So I did. <laughs> As you saw a clip from earlier, I did a little shit post which i don't do often i usually put effort into videos but i thought i'd just do a 90 second shit post briefly illustrating the eruption of autistic screeching <laughs> that occurs when you criticize or even just make fun of this meme <laughs> well i'm i'm not sure if it's the meme itself that everyone's so mama bear crazy to protect or if it's the c celebrity cult making it it's catchphrase. I'm not sure which of these things is the object of worship. I don't think I want to know. And I called the video Mike and Jim versus the Metacucks. Because honestly, at this point, I still thought Jim was in on the joke. I thought, you know, everyone, everyone's everyone got those kind of fanboys somewhere. Everyone, you know, at least everyone with a substantial audience has a substantial stock of disciples who are that fucking crazy and say embarrassing shit like don't language police my beloved <laughs> you know to try and mend the perceived damage to the sacred ego stop it stop it you stop hurting him right now he's a good man he would never touch me like my uncle dear <laughs> and i figured he was probably laughing along with me at, at the surreal things one finds in comment sections but I made a mistake. I didn't realize at the time that Jim is not, you know, like Jordan Peterson or anyone. He, he doesn't have, he doesn't just have a lot of incredibly retarded, obnoxious fans. He is exactly as <laughs> retarded and obnoxious as the worst of his fans, which is unusual. <laughs> I, yeah, I made the mistake of assuming Jim has 
a sense of humour that, like most people's, works in a way that involves being able to laugh at yourself. That's that's an integral part of having a sense of humour. And <laughs> it's it turns out Jim doesn't have a sense of humour, at least anymore. He only has a sense of drama. Tribal drama. There's no irony. There's no self-examination. It's just, it's only funny if it favours the correct person. And wouldn't you know it, the correct person is the cult celebrity in question. Every time. <laughs> How many years running now? I, I don't make the rules. So, let's go over it. What's, what's the... What might be the normal reaction to having your catchphrase mocked? What's the perhaps healthy response to, to those kind of bants? If someone says Kekistan is cringe, what do you do? As I said, you go, yeah, all right, whatever. And you get on with your life and having fun and whatnot. This, not so much. Not what I'd call a typical, or at least not a neurotypical reaction to having your words made fun of in a sea of people constantly making fun of each other's words. I don't think I'm alone in saying that when I hear your meme is bad and it makes my face hurt, it would never cross my mind to respond with anything like, we need to talk about this, let's take this seriously, let's take it to the next level. <laughs> Words to that effect are uncomfortable to hear even from someone you've slept with many times. To hear it from someone you've engaged with once in a YouTube comment section is... is it's, it's stare glassily into the corner time, folks. It's back slowly out of the room time. But, but be sure to leave a trail of nutritious grass on the way out because I've found myself a new lol cow. <laughs> and... This is where it became obvious that Jim is one of his own cronies. He's Because he's doing the thing, the magic mutant telepathy thing. Since you seem to have some issues, feel free to talk to me who has no issues. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to talk to you about, the, about this bizarre behavior of yours where you cringe at someone's meme. I've never seen anything like it. Boost my ratings, please. Yeah, no thanks. Well, then you're a pussy and a bitch-made faggot and you're not a real man and you're not a real men's rights advocate. Wait, I thought, and you, wait, I thought you said you didn't have any issues. I, I don't have any issues. I just... I really want to talk to you and you're not giving me what I want, so you're a coward. Sorry, coward is not on the list of five magic words. Maybe next season, eh? Bye-bye. That made him really mad. I mean, he's been that mad ever since, as far as I can tell. Come to think of it, he's been trying to fight everyone on the internet since then. <laughs> that, that, that's probably nothing to do with me, though. I, uh, I think the wheels were already falling off when I got there. Yeah, and when I say it's like to fight everyone on the internet, I mean, by fight, I mean bitch at everyone and gossip about everyone. <laughs> but, but, no, it's a special kind of bitching and gossiping that's just for men. <laughs> Real men. And, and, and if you are situated anywhere outside the virtual halls of this safe space kangaroo court we've set up, if you're, if you're anywhere outside here, then you can't make fun of it. Or you lose by default because of the names we call you. <laughs> and, and I have been, like... <laughs> subpoenaed a couple of times to appear in the Supreme Court of the Salt Gods on, on a series of charges that I guess we'll figure out if and when we get there. I have I have been on the Kumite, by the way. or you know, Before it was called the Kumite. Whatever it was. Same, same folks, same people. I got... Same month, actually, September of 2007. I got a message from, from Failure Accomplished going... Remember me from VidCon? Yeah, sure I do. You want to come on the show? Talk to, to me and Tonka and Vamp and Beardberrian, it was. And anyone else who wants to jump in? We're going to have a, like a drink and a, we'll just shoot the shit, basically. So I said, hell yeah. That sounds like fun. 
I like fun. It's not quite IRL fun, but it has most of the properties of fun. So I, so I went on, and it was fun. I, I do that sort of thing every now and again, because because it's fun. But uh, but a couple of times after that, I, I I get a message more along the lines of, "Come on the show, Jim wants to talk to you," <laughs> and that's that's yeah, not so much. <laughs> He's still pissed off about the autism thing, isn't he? Yeah, no, that doesn't sound like fun. That doesn't have any of the properties of fun. It's like we found this tetchy teenager who wants to yell at you for insulting his honour last September. No, thank you. Why would anyone say yes to that? Unless it's out of self-interest or self-promotion, and I believe that's against one of the rules we sometimes have. And and there's some folks getting increasingly pissed off and baffled that I don't <laughs> comply with the instructions of this system. They can't understand how I'm able to just close the tab, laugh, and not do what they want on account of their, their kangaroo safe space doesn't actually have any jurisdiction over me or over anyone. Yeah, I like calling someone names and then demanding they come to you so you can call them those names again or else they'll call you those names again is not actually legally binding. <laughs> like, like I said, right now, especially right now, I'm far more concerned with what's going on in my country concerning the real-life court system that really does have the power to drag someone through the courts over and over again for two years at their own expense because they mocked the wrong people on YouTube. They genuinely can legally oblige us to sit through hours of lies and voodoo mind-reading exercises and then convict us of the crime of being grossly offensive. Yeah, as, as such, I hope to see as many of you as possible in Westminster or at least somewhere on April the 23rd for the protest. That shit's actually going on in a semblance of reality, where it matters in a semblance of a way. Meanwhile, you got, you got some guys down here in an edgy corner of the internet, like playing dress up, basically playing fucking house. But, it, but it's court house. Like, like a bunch of South Park kids. <laughs> Addy, Addy, cat is in session. The defendant is charged with saying mean words to me and trying to police me. How do you plead? Yeah, they didn't they didn't show up. Nobody showed up. Nobody then heard them in contempt of care. We can't yeah, we can't do that. We can't make anyone do anything. We're just uh, kids playing a game. Screw you guys, I'm against him. And from there on it's it's a cycle of they get increasingly pissed off. They tell salty lies about me. They demand I give them what they want. <laughs> Nothing else happens. <laughs> Rinse and repeat. But after a while, the whole language police angle loses steam. It's just not a spicy enough story. And let's not forget, a bruised ego in a bad mood is capable of all kinds of duplicitous shenanigans when attempting to mend itself. The shenanigan that came next is where the story goes from funny to, well, funny, but in a disturbing way. Reading the comments on my shitpost video there, you'll notice the mentions of police or policing are down to a scant handful, many of which are references rather than evocations. But I started getting a lot of mentions, as you can see, of the Lexim pedo, most of which were indeed Evocations rather than just references. Is it pedo, 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 pedo. That's, see, that's quite a lot of pedos. And I go, wait, what? As we confirmed earlier, I mentioned pedos nowhere in this thread. And I mentioned, nowhere on the video, and I mentioned pedo, pedos nowhere in this video. I have no intention or interest in mentioning it, let alone promoting it, let alone an individual who is even theoretically capable of it. Pedophilia 
It's, it's like mass shootings, or like any other criminal act of bewildering sickness. You do no one any favors by sensationalizing these things. The whole idea of stigmatizing something is to prevent it from happening. If you create a public hysteria about something, you do nothing but appeal to and attract the kind of people who want to create public hysteria. That's the kind of stigma they want. Hence, at this point, I go, wait, what? Why are you promoting paedophilia? I thought this was about language policing. Now it's about paedophile defending. Oh, it's both, is it? Y'all just happen to have leapt from one to the other, just like that. I don't want to be a one-trick pony or nothing, but this is a lot like what happens when I criticize the patriarchy meme. One moment I'm charged with being a mansplainer, and the next moment I'm charged with being a rape apologist. And no one's quite sure... How we got from A to B. I mean, they're pretty much the same thing. It doesn't matter. And it turns out, they're talking about this guy. The guy in the video on which I left a comment thread in which I never mentioned him. Or what he does or stands for. I'm, I'm quite reluctant to even mention his name, because honestly, he's either mentally ill or he's just devotedly trolling everyone. Or both. Or both. And in any case, there's no point in spending any time or calories arguing with a mentally ill person or a troll. Let alone spending two videos on it. I was, I was a little bit worried about Jim at that point. Because I love Jim's videos. I've barely laughed many times at Jim's videos. So when he did two of those, I was like, why is he arguing with this nobody? And why is he not really laughing anymore. That's what he said. What did that mean? So, you know, why wouldn't you be worried? So I thought, so I thought I'd engage with Jim in some small way. But at the same time, I didn't want to mention that dude. Even though the reason I'm worried about Jim is that he spent two videos arguing with this dude nobody's heard of, and apparently he's not having fun anymore. I mean, he said he's not laughing anymore. That's surely what that means but the rule is you don't argue with trolls and you don't argue with the mentally ill they're both very bad ideas and this fella is at least one of them ideally don't give them any attention at all if you're genuinely worried that they might hurt someone then contact the local authorities and do it discreetly. Anything else would be frivolous or even counterproductive. <laughs> when I said this to Brianna Wu all those years ago, I probably should have left a footnote. Yeah, this isn't just for Wu. This this like works as a rule of thumb. But, like I said, I made a mistake. I, I tried, though albeit not very hard, to get Jim laughing again. At himself. Yeah, you know, so as to laugh at the world. But that's the thing. Well, when Jim said he's not really laughing anymore, he wasn't joking. So so to speak. He was more serious than I could have predicted. By that point his sense of humour had all but vanished with, as I said, nothing left but a sense of drama. So not only is he not in the least bit embarrassed by the pusillanimous cries of language police. He's not even perturbed by the cries of paedophile defender lobbed at someone who went out of their way never even to acknowledge that person, let alone defend them. Jim's not just unperturbed by this rather insane angle. He liked it so much that he picked it up and ran with it. You can't make fun of me. I attack pedos. So if you attack me, you're defending pedos. Ipso facto, vis-a-vis, -vis, I am the pedo hunter. Look, I've already got one confession. Ah. You know, uh, it, you know, especially given that trolls exist, um, a confession doesn't necessarily prove... <laughs> so... At this point in the story, I've, I've got people in my comment section going pedo, 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 pedo. I figure it's pertinent 
that I write this kind of comment. Well, this comment. And, and pin it to the top. Because when people start sensationalizing pedophilia, it begins to pose a small but unnerving danger to the public. Especially when they're only doing it to avenge the honor of an unrelated meme. And you know, I've, I've ascertained at this point that to some degree this is me trying to reason with people who aren't super interested in reasoning. So you know, being straightforward and literal won't necessarily help you. You have to... Well, you don't have to, but you can skew it ever so slightly so, so it fits in multiple holes, if you see what I mean. Just give them a comment. See if they could read it out loud without bailing partway through. <laughs> and you'll, you'll have made your point to anyone who's willing to hear it. A quick reminder that this is the video under which this comment was posted. After and in response to these I mean, 20 or so mentions of pedo something something. That is the series of events that we can establish factually with just two links. Under this video, I left this series of comments. B dissing the autism meme. That's what, that's, let's call it what it is. That's fine. I dissed the autism meme. But that is all I talked about in this thread, as can be proved. This conversation, at least at my end, concluded with Jim saying, feel free to make that video. Then I make that video, also approaching no subject other than the autism meme and the, the subject of the folks who are a teensy bit possessive of it. And, un and then under that video, I get a lot of angry <laughs> like fan kin posting some stuff about a pedo. And then I respond to those baseless accusations of pedo sympathy by posting this comment. Do you see the then, and then the then, and then the then, and then the then? It's, it's strange because sometimes someone will go, you haven't responded to these charges of, of defending a pedophile. And then they post a screenshot of this comment. No, divorced from context. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> like, bitch, this comment is me responding to these accusations. When you put things together properly. You just posted the very exhibit that proves I did what you're accusing me of not doing. <laughs> like, you, you should join the legal profession. Yeah, I know at least one province where you'll make big money. That's... Why I'm making this video, saying these things, on my own time and by no one else's rules or anyone else's splattershot excuse for a format with no rules. However engrossed anyone may be in the dress-up game they're playing, however much they insist that they could put anyone on trial and that person has to act like they are on trial, it is not so. You do not have to give them what they want. I am not on trial. I'm here to do what I want, and what I want in this instant, instance happens to be to give you the facts, the evidence, and the correct series of events. And you can take that information and play whatever game you like with it. And this is the correct series of events. Perhaps one or more of you may have got some things wrong, only being given out-of-context screenshots and no links, and you've been perhaps left with the impression that the timeline is this. That none of this shit happened, and that this comment is what I left on this video. I hope that's not the impression you've been left with. Is the true series of events. Is, I made fun of Jim's memes, then I did it again on request, and then Jim's memes am become death, destroyer of pedos. And then I say, ask yourself why you are now promoting and sensationalizing pedophilia. The, f the fairly obvious answer, when privy to all the facts, being because someone insulted the honor of your untouchable meme. 
None of this is there if you've no interest in seeing it, obviously. But if that's how gullible you are, or indeed how ready and willing you are to listen and believe whatever gives you your outrage fix, then I'm glad you found somewhere to go. Seriously, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you found a place you can be with the like-minded. And I'm glad that place is not me, because then I might be called to answer for you. And I'm glad that place is not the progressive left, because there you would actually have power. Another reason I'm making this video now is that the the magnitude of, of the salty lies being spun around this heresy of mine, the magnitude of it has gone not from not just promoting and sensationalizing paedophilia, but actively encouraging it. I hadn't predicted there'd be a third video and another stream in which a liar has told a paedophile that I support him in his paedophilia. Or just said it to a troll with God knows how many shrub rocketeers listening in online. It is, of course, not true. And not according to any of the available evidence. It's not just a misinterpretation or misrepresentation. It's a lie. It's a good old-fashioned lie explained by good old-fashioned salt. And if you're lying to paedophiles, telling them they have support, telling them they have individuals and structures defending their crimes and supporting their behaviour, when those individuals and those structures do no such thing, then you're actually encouraging paedophiles with your lies. That's what you're using your lies for. You're going, don't worry, nonces, don't worry, small bean regarders, there is hope. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. I know a man who supports you. Yeah, for real. He's totally not just a guy who made fun of me once. It's, it's like you go digging through the internet and you eventually find someone who says he's thinking of shooting up a school. And you tell that person, don't worry, I know a guy who totally thinks you should do that. And again, this totally isn't me potentially endangering people in the real world just to take out my rage about someone on the internet who refuses to take me seriously or my memes. <laughs> even, even if it turns out you're just talking to a troll, even if this is someone who's been playing you like a fiddle this whole time, even if that's the case, if you're saying it on air, if you're saying it vicariously to any paedophiles who might be listening to you, then at the very least, you are in no position to be calling other people to the stand. Of all the things you could do with a lie, of all the things... Using a lie to, like, troll someone is... It's an everyday occurrence, whatever. But giving a lie to a mob in the currency of outrage, well, is one thing. But giving a lie to paedophiles in the currency of confidence is... It's at that point I don't like this lol cow anymore. Its milk has gone sour. Very sour indeed. People are accidentally drinking it all over YouTube. Now, I won't say... I... I well, won't, wouldn't, and can't say I already addressed it further, but I did already plant a seed, which got others to address it. Like I said, being literal and straightforward is something of a fruitless folly when it comes to sword fighting against a fart. You can't sword fight a fart. You'll only look silly trying. Your only option is to fart. That's kind of what my cartoons are. That. My cartoons are not exactly known for getting to the point. They're very surreal and open-ended, even as far as cartoons go. I like it that way. It's not about one thing. It's about as many things as possible and how those things can relate to each other in the conscience of the observer. That's, that's the whole point of an allegory, in case anyone's wondering. In case you've been sat there watching South Park for 20 years going, this is just randomness. 
Randomness in a fictional town. I don't get what's politically relevant about any of this. So, of course, I get a fair amount of people commenting under these cartoons going, what the hell did I just watch? I don't understand what this is about. What were you smoking, etc. And as far as I'm concerned, that answer is perfectly correct. I mean, that interpretation is perfectly reasonable. I don't want you to go away from art, even crap art like mine, knowing the correct answer to it. Or even the most probable answer to it. Correct answers and probable answers, the, you know, those sorts of things are in the realm of science, and that is not what I do, however much I may admire the realm of science. My shit is just musings. It doesn't have to be about anything. So if you don't know what it's about, then you've made no mistakes. Indeed, if the situation I've painted is wholly unfamiliar to you, if all you see is brand new original characters doing brand new original things, so be it. Experience the moment. Let something else be the allegory. However, on rare occasions, I also get some people going, I know exactly what this is about. And they proceed to give their interpretation. Here are some of those interpretations. It's at this point that I'm regretfully using the name I'm avoiding mentioning as the search term here, because it's at this point in the story that some people get the idea that this cartoon is also me responding to the allegations of defending a mentally ill person slash troll. I don't know if any of them are the same people who to this day are claiming you won't defend yourself you won't even address these allegations of mine, while on the other side of the old face there, they are quite convinced that I already have. Or at least, or at least they are mysteriously neglecting to argue with each other. And, and the funniest part of this is they consider this <laughs> portrayal to be defensive. Defensive and I believe the descriptor would be sympathetic. I with boy. As I said, these characters could be whoever you want them to be in whatever context suits you. Uh, ten years from now, this cartoon will make just as much sense as it does now. Namely, zero sense. <laughs> but one thing I should think is pretty universally understood is this is the protagonist of the episode. The, the evil panda, albeit a stereotypical villain trope. He's, you know, he's, got, he's got keen eyes and sh sharp teeth, and he's always smiling. And he's basically omnipotent in the context of the cartoon. Because I'm lazy. I don't give much of a fuck about character building, let alone in the third dimension. I, I think the posh word for it is Brechtian or something. And also, uh, for the most part, the panda represents me. The creator is omnipotent in the context of the creation. Why beat about the bush? The, the premise, the loose premise of the cartoon is this is me. The badges are the badges. And in a typical episode, one or more of us encounters one or more bizarrely behaving critters in the woods. Sometimes it's obvious who those critters represent, especially in some earlier episodes. Sometimes it's less obvious... And sometimes the critters are not representing an individual at all and are only representing an idea, or the behaviour itself, as it were, especially in some later episodes. It's up to you to make of it what you will. And what you make of it may very well say more about you than it does about me, or about anything else. If what you make of it is you see this character, this you know, barely functioning blob on the ground who speaks only in slurred confessions to things no sane person would ever confess to. If you find this to be, to be a sympathetic portrayal of an idea or behaviour or even individual in a cartoon about strange, irrational, possibly dangerous creatures that this guy sometimes encounters, if you think this is a supportive... Caricature, <laughs> if you think the person who drew this figure and told it what to say and voiced it 
was was doing it as some kind of offering to the to the proud reputation of some kind of trusted nobleman, not doing a flattering portrait for a king. If that's what you think this is, yeah, as I said, there are no wrong answers when interpreting art. But as I also said, you may find your interpretations say more about you than they do about me. I mean, allow me to burst a few more bubbles. This is my portrayal of Big Red. <laughs> Fair cop, Governor, I am hereby a Big Red sympathiser. This is my portrayal of Manhood Academy. <laughs> Remember Manhood Academy? <laughs> Remember him, them, whoever that was? A most sympathetic depiction, I'm sure you'll agree. <laughs> Long overdue for a sequel, that one. All in good time. This is this is our good buddy Chenk from earlier. He's capable of, of not taking himself too seriously, but not always. It's pretty obvious that this one's about that time Karen was interviewed on the Young Turks. And one can hardly deny what a ruthless defense of the Young Turks this is. And, and, and this mole symbolizes standpoint theory. And... What a, what a sympathetic light in which it paints standpoint theory. That's the universe being destroyed, by the way, but hey, that happens a lot. Sympathy is a slippery fish sometimes. Maybe, eh? That's why this episode is called, and always has been called, Sympathesia. Because it's that easy to spontaneously forget with whom you think you're supposed to be sympathising. Point being, I I don't need to give any explanations to anyone. I am not on trial anywhere but in someone's game. I especially don't owe any explanations to someone who is or has declared publicly, Hey, pedos, hey, chimney bottlers everywhere, have no fear. Someone out there loves you. You know how I know that? Because they made this cartoon character, and it made me think of you. I was born on the moon. <laughs> See, that's one of those arguments that inherently refutes itself. Unless you are a crazy person. <laughs> Perhaps such is the nature of doing cartoons about crazy things. To anyone else, it's obvious that this character and this character are both unsympathetic characters. They are both the ones being mocked. It's hard to say if they symbolise ideas or individuals. It's a late episode. Even I'm not sure at this point. But it's an old, you know, cliche. I just wanted to pit two different kinds of narcissist together and see how they interact. And sure enough, one of them is easily convinced that people are defending him. The other is easily convinced that people are attacking him. That's, that's narcissism for you. Either everyone loves me or everyone hates me, but I have to take one of those forks. They can even convince each other of these things and then, you know, forget that they ever engaged in the process of convincing. It's like, I think it's like a blind guy and a deaf guy who really don't get along, but have nevertheless found themselves interacting. It's inherently rich in comedy potential. How can you even resist? But... If you, if you can't really register that sort of thing, the ironic situation that could happen to anyone, the humour rather than just the drama, if the only thing you could register is that you like this character and you don't like this character, or you, you, or you, you like and don't like the people you're convinced they represent, and you have that X-Men ability... <laughs> To make reality not be real like it is, but it do, Ooga Pooga. Then, hocus pocus, what's going on here is this character is being attacked and this character is being defended. You know, rather than this character is making fun of both of these characters. Because you can't make fun of this character. This character, I'm pretty sure, is a noble and virtuous exposer of fascist abusers like this character. That also is just an internet troll who doesn't care about anything. <laughs> it's, it is therefore impossible for both of these characters to be worth mocking in any way, because this one is engaging in social debauchery and this one is engaging in social justice. I mean, not, not, 
I mean, not, I, I mean hunting pedos. And not the corruptible kind of social justice, the good kind. <laughs> well, we don't care about anything. We're just hunting pedos for the lols, which you can't laugh at. <laughs> that, uh, that last line of the pandas was something like, You ridiculous, a robberous mesh of cluster P. You ridiculous or robberous mesh of cluster B. What's cluster B? Yeah, exactly something you would say to people with whom you are sympathizing. Now, I'm I'm sorry if any of of this explanation spoils the magic. (laughs) All right, I won't call it magic. Sorry sorry if any of this spoils the bullshit I do. Everyone knows a joke explained is a joke ruined, like a dissected frog. But if me explaining a joke means the difference between a liar successfully encouraging paedophiles and a liar unsuccessfully trying to encourage paedophiles, then I'll do it. I will undermine that success in a non-humorous way if I have to, in a long-winded way if I have to, reminded as I am that it's not just about being funny. It's not just about draining the lol cows. Fun though it may be. Sometimes you'll find yourself having to do something responsible. As I once said somewhere, just like virtue without humour is lame, humour without virtue is blind. And that's what I mean by virtue, responsibility. Virtue and responsibility are one and the same. At least they should be, in my opinion. Troll trolling is trolling is a hilarious pastime. Don't get me wrong, I do it all the time. And sometimes there is even a case to be made for trolling being the right thing to do. So I could not and would not blame anyone for indulging in a bit in a bit of trolling, at least in moderation. You you can pretend that you genuinely believe the earth is flat, so you can watch the reactions of someone frustratedly arguing with with, with the nonsense you're going out with. It is jolly entertaining. Until, until they or someone else listening thinks, holy shit, you're right. The earth is flat. And before you know it, you have a whole group of people who genuinely believe the earth is flat and they start isolating themselves from the normies. For real, not just ironically. At that point, at that point, Maybe it's the responsible thing to do, to step in and go, guys, I was fucking with you. I was. The Earth isn't flat. The Earth isn't flat, and I don't believe it is. I never believed it is. And yeah, and just hope that by that point it isn't too late. That the lie has not already grown greater than the liar. And for and for anyone who still can't understand what I'm saying. Anyone who's that fucking, I'll say it, autistic. Anyone who's (laughs) so much so that the only thing you understand is the straightforward literal truth. Here you go. I do not and never have endorsed, defended or supported child abuse of any kind, including, but not limited to, pedophilia. Here's me crying about child abuse. Here's me angrily crying about child abuse. Here's me angrily crying about the way children abuse each other, but endeavouring endeavoring to try and cathartically conclude that it's wrong and unhealthy to hold a grudge against them for it, or against anyone because of it. Here's me saying... No! 116,000 times child abuse is not okay! Like way back in the potato camera days. The, the first episode of the Honey Badger cartoon was about... A real life person who's a child abuser as far as I'm concerned. Who I won't name either. You know, that that probably slipped through unnoticed as well. You see what you want to see and nothing else when you're wearing your prosecutor's hat. There. Here's another cartoon. This one concerning the dangers of online predation, shall we say, among other things. Also from way back in the potato days. But none of the people... I've responded to in a response format. None of the people I've featured in my videos, at least to the best of my knowledge, none of them are paedophiles. Certainly not at large. If that turns out to be the case for any of the people I've 
highlighted on my channel. Then at least at least this is another reason I'm glad I have the no turd twice rule. When you're trying to become famous, and that is what you're doing when you publicize your videos or even publicize your comments to some degree, you're trying to make your views more famous than they are. And that's fine when you're trying to become more famous. It helps to be selective with who else you make famous along the way. When you make a video about someone or featuring someone, or responding to someone, you immortalize them. No matter how scathing you are in your review, you are immortalizing th their memory, at least in principle. I have no interest in driving the immortalization or lionization, if you'd rather call it, of people who are genuinely sick or dangerous. I don't just mean people who say wacky things in newspaper columns that I call sick or dangerous for rhetorical effect. I mean genuinely sick or dangerous people who, fo who pose a potentially credible physical threat to those around them. I have, <clears throat> I have sometimes mentioned sick people or done videos about them who've already been immortalized by the machinations of the news. But if they're already made examples of, or I might as well bring them up if they're relevant. I, I, don't, I just don't want to be the one making it relevant. I would rather avoid the posthumous king-making wherever possible. Though there are exceptions, in my responses I prefer to focus on ordinary people who j simply got something wrong. Because, because they're just as stupid and naive as I am. And I, I, I'm by no means unique in that approach, am I? What else could you ask for? So remember, folks, sometimes people lie, sometimes people are stupid, sometimes people get butt hurt, and very often they will do nothing but yell, no you. <laughs> A lot of them are doing it right now, right? Because I said butthurt just now and other mean words. And that means I am those mean words. Of course. These, these, uh, these elements are not related except in the ways they overlap. Which they frequently do. Dishonesty, stupidity, salt and denial. In any large group, any substantial celebrity cult any crowd of people that might in some areas have trouble thinking for themselves in any such entity there's going to be the occasional storm or even perfect storm of these four elements dishonesty stupidity salt and denial it's when things get ugly disturbingly ugly for no feasible reason it's the kind of thing you'll find at the beginning of every witch hunt. And indeed, it's what happens when, when the dear leader makes a mistake. It wasn't me. I don't know. How dare you question me? It was you! And everyone, everyone's got to scramble to try and not be the one they're pointing at when they say you. Yeah, and, and it spirals from there. To the point where you can't even describe, let alone criticize, a mistake or behavior. Even non-personally, incorporeally. You can't describe or criticize it if it sounds like something the dear leader would do. After all, the dear leader would never do that. There, there must always be someone else to take responsibility for what the dear leader does. Which the dear leader does not do, etc. And, and if you criticise the dear leader, or seem to be criticising the dear leader, then they call you a coward. <laughs> Which somehow makes sense in the minds of people who are themselves all palpably too scared to criticise the dear leader. Challenge them if you must. You know, and before you know it, 
you you do a video where you and your pug take the piss out of paedophiles and you get locked up for being grossly offensive. I am, of course, reminding you once more that this kind of thing is indeed happening in the real-life, material, nuts-and-bolts legal system of the country in which I am currently residing. That is where my priorities are right now, as should yours be, if you have any sense of perspective. If it's drama you want, I would recommend keeping an eye on what's going on in Glasgow this month in a scandal of historic proportions. Something that could affect anyone in this country next, and any other country next. Not to mention all of that fucking war business that's now going on as well. If you've learned anything from this video, I hope it's to put things in perspective. Anyone who would rather distract you from what's going on IRL, distract you with some virtual chimps tea party they've set up on YouTube, where they bitch about nothing, less than nothing, they bitch about lies told by bruised and very insecure egos. Anyone who would sooner have that be the thing you get outraged by is someone who might not have anyone's best interest in mind. But it doesn't matter because, to reiterate and conclude, they do not have any jurisdiction over you, no matter what names they call you or how often they call you them. You don't owe anyone your time, not even in exchange for their money. Except, of course, the legal system in your country. They will, they will actually make you owe them your time, whether you like it or not. So, not telling you what to do, all I can do is show you patterns and where they exist. But even a simpleton like me can tell you it's probably in your best interests to focus your outrage on those who do have power over you. Those who do have or could have the ability and occasion not just to bully you, but to force you at state-sponsored gunpoint to stand trial for your speech. And only your speech. If all you're doing is infighting with your fellow scampering specimens of cannon fodder, all you're doing is fighting to be the last one killed. Which... I suppose is not exactly a problem if you are in some way not long for this world. If what you're singing is your swan song, then I or anyone would be a fool to argue. But some of us are still undecided on the question of whether to be or not to be. And we'd at least like a little bit more future in which to keep thinking about it. So we focus our ire on the forces that can, do and are, building the future we don't want. <laughs> I've lost you all again, haven't I? Fuck the meme police, is what I'm saying. Fuck the meme police, because the actual police could be at your door any day. I'm not interested in people who've appointed themselves as judge and jury and Supreme Court Justice of YouTube and prosecutor and superintendent and bailiff of the internet. They are not any of these things. And I'm not interested in who you think really is being the mean police, lol, no you, etc. I'm interested in what the police are doing. Just the police, the police police and the government. The people with power and the ideologues in charge of them. Consider why there's another line at the end of this that references a conference hall in Baghdad. You might, if you're so inclined, take that as a very vague hint that this episode is about Saddam Hussein. At least that's a message that's going to be the same for people watching this cartoon ten years from now. You know, when all the unimportant shit is washed away and we're left with the historical events. Like the Baghdad purge and the Dankula conviction. Shit that actually matters, you know. So I'll play us out with the, uh, that infamous footage of Saddam Hussein 
a man who was, with no doubt or hyperbole, indefensibly sick, sociopathically sick, and deserving of zero sympathy. Minus figures, if possible. This, this is footage of him appearing at a public conference before as many leaders and dignitaries as possible, and presenting on stage another man who is also evidently sick, albeit doing his best impersonation of lucidity, as he confesses to treasonous and unforgivable crimes of conspiracy, and proceeds to read out names of other dignitaries in the room who are also complicit in this conspiracy. Those men whose names are read out are taken out one by one and shot by the other dignitaries in the hall who are forced to do so. That was the moment Saddam Hussein seized power in Iraq. All it took was one human confession-producing machine and a big enough crowd for the four elements to coalesce. Dishonesty, stupidity, salt, denial. And no one knows what to do other than praise the dear leader in abject servitude. Throw yourself at the dear leader's feet in the hope of cultivating some favouritism that might save you. And from there on in, you cling to favouritism as the only thing that can save you. As I've said, I'm more worried about Syria at the moment, and indeed the future of my own country. But if you can watch Saddam Hussein in action and hear his actions described, if you can try to learn a lesson from it, and all you can think about as you watch it is the actions of your own dear leader. Then, my darling, no wonder you are angry at me. It's all you're permitted to be. And I don't wish to gloat over anyone who's in that position, but if your leader scares you like Saddam Hussein scares you, then who exactly is? And what exactly is? Bitch made. He's an asshole.